Hello everyone and welcome back. So what's on tap for today? Well, we've got a video here, our reaction video to Senator Josh Hawley questioning the whistleblower from Twitter on the Hunter Biden files and everything else that Twitter was doing. We're going to get to that in just the next few seconds, but if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. You're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your guest host. My name is Dr. Nasser. Like, share, follow us. Hit that notification bell. And let's get to the video between Josh Hawley and the whistleblower at Twitter. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for your testimony. Thank you. I, I want to make sure I get this straight. You've you've stated today and, and in your report that about four thousand Twitter employees are classified as engineers. Is that right? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, at the time, half of the employees, I believe, there were seven thousand plus full time employees. Got it. And that means that these. 4,000-ish employees would have had access to live user data all, data all over Twitter. They could access individual users' personal information, including their live data. Have I got that right? Yes, sir. If they uh, So they would have access to the production environment. If they spent the time to meander around and look around, they would find that they could access these large troves of data. Including geolocation data? Did you testify to that earlier today? Uh, that the, I know that Twitter has IP locations uh, and that they do use uh, geolocation uh, services uh, based upon IP addresses. Wow, 4,000 employees with access to that data. That's extraordinary. So those employees would be in a position then, if they wanted to, to get this information and, and dox Twitter users. Is that fair to say? That is a concern of mine, sir, yes. Wow. Um, that's a significant concern. 4,000 people with the ability to dox individual users who pick up the phone and <laughs> use Twitter. Uh, that's extraordinary. And we've seen that happen, right? We've seen people being outed, being doxxed. Look what happened, okay, with the libs of TikTok creator. You know, she was doxxed, she was outed, and this is in the hands of these engineers. I would, like you said, out of the seven plus thousand employees, over half, 50%, over half of them, 4,000 engineers had access to the personal data of every Twitter user that's out there. That's unbelievable. That's an immense amount of power that these people had that, that they could have used, okay, to, you know, go after people. Unbelievable, folks. Unbelievable. Have you ever seen it happen? Uh, I have seen uh, numerous situations where uh, Twitter engineers uh, had to patch a problem, and I said, what was the problem? And they said, oh, engineers could tweet as anybody. The data was exposed in this part, and it was always reactionary rather in finding these wounds left and right and putting Band-Aids on them because the systemic underlying problems were not addressed, the broad access to too much information and too many systems. When you say Twitter engineers could, could tweet as anybody, tell me what that means. Uh, that meant a Twitter engineer understanding how the running systems and the data flows were operating could then access and inject or put forward information as, as I mentioned in my oral statement, uh, any of the senators sitting here today. And have you ever seen that happen? Not with the, no, not directly. You, not directly. Do you, are you concerned it has happened? Do you have some reason to believe it may have happened? The number of cases that were reported to me by individual uh, engineers saying, hey, we found this, I'm going to try and have somebody fix it, where that was the exact problem and we wouldn't know if it had happened in the past. Yes, I am concerned. Wow. That, I think that's pretty significant testimony. Um, I just have to stop it here. It's significant testimony. In other words, these 4,000 plus engineers, any one of them, who wanted to act nefariously could have gone in as a Twitter user, as you said, as posing as a senator, posing as a congressman, theoretically posing as a president when President uh, Trump was on Twitter. You or I, we talk about being hacked externally. This would be the hacking internally of somebody doing something, posing as somebody as a Twitter user. That is unbelievable, folks, unbelievable. And this gentleman is saying that he didn't see it happen directly, but indirectly, how many times could this have happened? Wow. Amazing testimony. Let me, let me make sure that I understand also just this point. A Facebook whistleblower came forward a couple of years ago now, came to me to my office and told us that at Facebook, they at least had some policies on the books that restricted back-end developers from using or from accessing user data. Now, 
whether or not those policies were ever followed, who really knows. But is, is it your testimony to me that Twitter had no similar policies in place that would have restricted these 4,000 engineers from accessing user data in this way? Not technical enforcement, uh, technical policies that were enforced. I did see basic policies such as, hey, you're not supposed to access inappropriate systems. But I also saw policies saying that your uh, work uh, laptops should only run in the following situ uh, um setups, and I was aware that I don't believe any of the laptops were in compliance with those policies. None of the laptops? Based upon the policy that I read, uh, I do not believe any of the laptops were in compliance with that security policy. <laughs> Zero. Zero in compliance with their policy. That's extraordinary. Um, let, let, me, let me ask you about this. That, that same Facebook whistleblower told us a couple of years ago now that Twitter's content moderation staff routinely collaborated with content moderators at, at Facebook and Google. Is that true to your knowledge? Do you have any information about that? That that would be in a, a, a team under counsel, and I wouldn't have first-hand knowledge of that. Um, are, are you aware of any Twitter policies that would have prohibited coordination on content mo moderation between uh, Facebook, Google, and Twitter? Not to the best of my knowledge, I am not aware. Okay, so it, 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 it's, very, it's eminently possible, is what you're saying. Yes, sir. Um, let me ask you. And before. I'll let this continue, but we have found out since that there was considerable coordination between Facebook and the government, FBI, DOJ, and with Twitter and the FBI. In fact, there were hirings of ex-FBI agents, ex-CIA personnel that Twitter had hired, that Facebook had hired. So we know all of this now. So this gentleman doesn't know of it in particular, obviously, but it has come out from other whistleblowers and another testimony from other people. About this, are you aware of any communications regarding content moderation with Twitter staff and uh, the United States government in your time at the company? Uh, I'm familiar of uh, the conversations that happened through the Department of Homeland Security, the traffic light protocol, um, where there are messages sent out to uh, organizations uh, about uh, threats that maybe the FBI or other organizations uh, uh, had insight into. So earlier this year, documents that we obtained from a different whistleblower at the Department of Homeland Security exposed that the disinformation board that the Department of Homeland Security set up, that first on the disinformation board's list of companies to meet with was Twitter. And they had an extensive memo which, by the way, is public information now. We've released it. You can go and look at it. But they had a memo prepared with notes for this meeting with Twitter talking about cooperation and content moderation and, frankly, in monitoring Americans' speech. And now we know that thousands of Twitter employees have access to that. Uh, this was all in these documents. I guess my question to you is, and I know you weren't in those meetings, but why do you suppose that the disinformation board had Twitter first on the list of entities to come to to talk about coordinating, monitoring American speech? I, I can't opine on that, but I can say that Twitter is a tremendously influential uh, platform, and we do know that there are information operations you know, being run on, on Twitter. Do you think it's maybe because Twitter has proved so pliant to government pressure to censorship and monitor people? I'm thinking of, you know, first of all, the Hunter Biden story. We now know that Twitter... Uh, killed the Hunter Biden reporting. We know Mark Zuckerberg has said that the FBI pushed Facebook to do so. Facebook throttled it down. Twitter killed it completely, wouldn't, you know, locked up accounts that were trying to report on what we now know was a true story. Or how about by your own, in your own report, you claimed that the Twitter CEO proposed caving to the Russian government's demands to censor content on Twitter and spy on its users. And you noted that this occurred even as you were directing employees to prepare for the Russian invasion of Ukraine. That sounds like an executive team that's pretty darn pliant to the demands of, of governments to weaponize effectively their platform to control information, to spy on its users. What's your view? Um, I, the, I wasn't there when the Hunter Biden issue happened, and I don't have any information on that. I wasn't briefed into it or involved in any of the investigations. The CEO was the CTO at the time when he proposed to me that, hey, what do you think about, uh, you know, why don't we just let Russia perform their own moderation? They're a democracy, so why should why should we uh, uh, why shouldn't we let them do it? Um, I didn't know what to think at the time. But then, sir, I was a little flabbergasted. Uh, well, I think I know what to think, uh, which is that Twitter has been all too eager to take private information 
from its users without telling them, to sell it and monetize it without their permission, uh, to expose them to the worst kind of security threats, to censor them, to spy on them. I mean, this you have painted a picture of a company that is not only out of control. That, folks, was some really unbelievable testimony at the very end when he said that the previous CEO of Twitter, he was a CTO, proposed that he said, let Russia moderate its own content, their democracy. I mean, was this guy smoking something at that point? I mean, Russia's a democracy? Really? <laughs> I mean, as Senator Hawley was saying, to be that pliant, to be able to, to bend over with basically, you know, hey, don't use any Vaseline on us, okay? We're bending over, all right? Do whatever you want to us. But Twitter didn't have the... But they didn't have the cojones, the balls to basically say, no, you know why? Because Twitter also is an extreme left group. Over 98% of the employees donated to Democrats and Democrat and progressive causes. Very few, 2%, 2%, less than 2% uh, donate to Republicans in a very tiny amount, 98 to 2%. And these guys are saying, and no wonder the FBI went to them. No wonder the DOJ went to them. No wonder CIA is trying to, you know, of course, information. Let's spy on our own citizens. That's a whole idea behind what these companies want to do. The absolute power corrupts absolutely. And that's exactly what you can say what was going on. There was so much collusion between government agencies going around the First Amendment. And we've seen it happen. Whistleblowers are coming out. Testimony is there and other videos that we're putting out there forward as well. So that was it for this one. We thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your guest host. My name is Dr. Nasser. Subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell. Like, share, follow us. Put down the comments below what you think. We'd really love to uh, you to share that with everyone else. And I'll leave you with my final thought, which is... When you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. We'll see you again next time, folks. Take care and stay safe.